come in. Uh, 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 yes, yes, come in, sit down. Uh, what are you here for? Uh, I'm here about the job. Oh, yes, of course. Now, the person we're looking for must be... Pardon, sir? It's a cow. You've never heard a cow before? Oh, uh, well, yes, but... Uh, uh, There's another one. Actually, it's a Brahmin bull. They're different from cows, you know. Uh, yes, I know. I uh, thought you would. You're an intelligent-looking young man. Oh, no, well, I <laughs> thought... <laughs> oh! What was that? A chook. But what sort? Uh, big. Wrong. <laughs> you do want to be our company secretary, don't you? Well, uh, yes, sir. Well, pay attention. <laughs> now then, I don't want you to feel I'm putting pressure on you. <laughs> but how long do you intend to stay with us? <laughs> um, well, what do you uh, think? <laughs> come, come. Uh, uh, Marino? Wrong. It's the Tibetan leaping sheep. <laughs> They're woolly and uh, they leap in Tibet. Hence, of course, the name. Um, Tibetan leaping sheep. I'm not quite up on sheep, sir, but, but getting back to the job... Quite right. I... They've been extinct for 5,000 years, so you don't see many these days. Not around this office, anyway. Oh, I think I'd better sit be... Sit down, sit yeah. down. I haven't finished the interview yet. Yeah, but, but I don't understand Ooh, what... Boing, ooh, boing, ooh, boing. What was that? I'm sorry, sir, but I... Come, come, guess, man. Ooh, boing. Um, a, a kangaroo? A wombat on a pogo stick. Fools, everyone. <laughs> Of course. Of course, you say, of course. I'm not taken in by your shroud of deception. What colour is the pogo stick? Uh, boing. Mm? Blue. Wrong. Puce with red stripes. Oh. Gee, about the job, sir. Now, I... Burrit, burrit, I... Burrit, 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 burrit. What's that, eh? Oh, look, forget about the job. I'll, I'll be going... Burrit, burrit. On... You don't know, do you? Oh, goodbye, sir. I'm it's not... a duck. A duck? Yes, a duck. A South American tree-climbing duck doing his impression of a tap-dancing gorilla singing a Kamal songbook with severe laryngitis. <laughs> I fooled you, didn't I? Didn't I? Baroop, baroop. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. <sighs> Fool. He'd have been a terrible company secretary anyway. Oh, good morning. And who are you? Uh, the name's Carter, sir. You're the only one? Yes, the others all left. Said they weren't going to wait around for any silly old fool. Really? Hmm, strange. No, oh, well, as you're the only one, I suppose the job's yours. Welcome aboard, Carter. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hi there. Your old pal Tommy here with another in the series of Hero Dogs. Today, Trusty the Kelpie. It was a normal working day for Trusty and his master, Wally Graham, the boundary rider on Mullerina Station in Central Australia. Trusty had been a bit naughty that day, and Wally had to chastise him for eating all those sheep. <laughs> but soon, Wally had forgotten their little quarrel as they went about their lonely chores. Then, fate stepped in. <laughs> Wally's horse reared and threw him to the ground ah. and broke his leg. Ah, oh, me leg's broken. <laughs> From out of the rocks, 18 death adders slowly slithered. Jeez, death adders. Frantically, Wally scribbled a note and said, Here, trusty. Take this to the homestead. Here, trusty, take this to the homestead. Go, boy, he said. Go, boy. Trusty knew what to do. With those death adders getting closer, trusty was away like the wind. Across the searing desert, the flinty stones tearing at his flying paws, Trusty ran on and on, never daring to stop, his hot breath rasping in his parched throat. Finally, around sundown and at the point of exhaustion, Trusty came over the hill and saw the lights burning at the homestead window. He'd made it. With his last ounce of strength, he dragged himself to the tank stand, drank deeply, then went under the house and chewed up the note. <laughs> G'day, I'm Mike. And I'm Mal. 
And we're here to say... Ask, ask, ask the Leyland Brothers. <laughs> well, viewers, our first letter today comes from... Who does it come from, Mal? I have it in my hand, Mike. Struth, what a coincidence. <laughs> Master Julius Coleman of Happy Valley writes, What does a Sepik River tribesman look like? A thoughtful question, Julius, and a question that had us stumped for a bit. We couldn't actually go to Sepik River because our busy schedule wouldn't allow it. And we couldn't find it. <laughs> However, Mike's inventive brain has yet again saved the day and we are now able to show you this exclusive piece of film graphically depicting a lifelike facsimile of a Sepik River native. The man you should be concentrating on is the one who is smiling and waving at us with the grey double-breasted suit and the bone in his nose. But let's tell them the real story behind this graphic recreation. Right, Mal. I know it's hard to believe, but that is not a real Sepik River native. That is, in fact, our next-door neighbour, who assures us that he goes very brown in summer. Thanks a lot to a good neighbour, Luigi Del Zotto. <laughs> the lady entering the shot wearing the lap-lap and rolled black stockings is Luigi's mother-in-law. By the way, that isn't a bone in her nose. It is, in fact, a Band-Aid. Although she looks a bit shy, she's a real old trooper because just prior to this film being taken, she stood on a rake. <laughs> oh, for those queasy at stomach, don't worry. That isn't a real human head impaled on Luigi's hoe. No, it's just a black velvet Aboriginal painting wrapped around a choco. <laughs> yes. Goodbye to you too, Luigi. And with fond memories, Mal and me climbed the fence back into our backyard <laughs> and the next letter. Take it away, Mal. I'm standing here in the cool shade of our compost tumbler <laughs> and here comes my wife with what looks for all the world to be a letter in her hand. What's that, dear? It's a letter in my hand. <laughs> Is it for us? Yes. Struth, what a coincidence. It comes from Master Julius Coleman again. <laughs> Struth, it's been a day chocker with coincidences. This time, little Julius asks, is it true that certain Italians have been known to stick a bone in their noses? <laughs> and dress up as Sepik River natives? That's a tough one, Mike. Oh, it really is, Mal. So join us next week when we load up the land cruisers and strike out across the Simpson Desert to Rome. <laughs> and hopefully to answer your question. And remember, if there's anything you want to know... Ask! Ask the Leyland, ask the Leyland, ask the Leyland brothers. Shop. Oh no. Don't be like that. Why not? Cause tis I, Hosanna. <laughs> Rack off, Hosanna. <laughs> Don't. What do you want? The cloak of destiny. Eh? The cape of courage, the mantilla of might, the robe of revenge, the turban of triumph, the cotton crown of charisma. This is what I crave. Stick your kimbies on your head. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I want a Dickies. I'm not going to answer that, Bruce. <laughs> you know, a dry glow. Stick your tongue in a light socket. <laughs> no, I want a towel. Had another one of your accidents, have you? Mock me not, Mrs. Jackson, for I am Bruce of Arabia. You, the twerp of Wombat Crescent. Thinks. The sun blazes down on the great Arabian Sea of Sand. The horizon shimmers into the searing sky as I set my firm jaw and flinty blue eyes into the Peter O'Toole look-alike expression that has parted the yashmaks of a thousand dark-eyed Arab girls. <laughs> With reckless flippancy, I toss aside my half-chewed date, <laughs> blow one last perfect bubble through my hooker, and mount Trevor. Trevor? My camel. 
He's a boy, you know. Otherwise, of course, I'd call him Trevoline after my mum. Suddenly, inside my mud brick HQ, the telegraph chatters. The white man singing wires bring me a message of great urgency. Dit 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 goes, and my blood turns to ice. Why? I can't understand a word of it. <laughs> Trevor ate my Morse book. It's a call to action. I move like lightning and desperately spur Trevor, but he still won't get off the end of my bed. The camel sleeps on the end of your bed. Only when he's tired. <laughs> in the dark pre-dawn, I rise and wake my men who slumber in their tents. Awake, awake! Up, Farouk! Up, Ahmed! Up, Omar! And as one man, they rise and roar their ancient Arabian battle cry. Up, you too! <laughs> but soon we are thundering across the sandy plains. It's the dates, you know. <laughs> And at the head of the column, I gallop, mounted on Trevor, leading them into battle against the dreaded Turk. My heart swells with pride as my men chant their stirring stanza of respect for me, their leader. Ride tall, ride loose, ride on with Bruce the Noose. <laughs> Bruce. What? Here's your towel. Thank you. And Bruce. Yes? Piss off. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yeah? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about your sandwiches? What about them? What spread does your wife use on them? Yak fat. <laughs> Pardon? Yak fat. I'm a vegetarian. Oh, come, sir. It couldn't be yak fat. You must be joking. Yeah, I am. Well, what spread is it, then? Wombat fat. I'm not a vegetarian. <laughs> oh. Um, sir, I hope you don't mind my asking. What? Why are you wearing a frock? Because I want to look like a girl, of course. Why do you want to look like a girl? So people don't hit me when I give them parking tickets. Oh. Thank you. Oh, by the way. Yes? Is that your car? Yes. Don't hit me. Good morning, Deirdre. It's a lovely day here at 14 Wombat Crescent and what's on at the 6 a.m. starters for breakfast? Good morning, Mervyn dear. Lined up and ready to go. We have juice out of fridge by Orchie. <laughs> Closely followed by milk out of carton by Daisy. Egg out of egg shell by Chook. What about uh, snags? A late scratching, uh, Mervyn, out of luck. That's a blow, Deirdre. Never mind, have a chop. Negative, Deirdre. What's on the list of events for today? You promised to trim uh, the turf. No can do, Deirdre. The victors had the dick. Well... <laughs> Why not fix it, uh, Mervyn? If you recall, Deirdre, it was your very own long-haired son uh, who, while trying to impress a certain well-norked uh, Francine, <laughs> did render the mower useless today when he ran over Neville, the uh, tastefully decorative concrete Aboriginal, uh, <laughs> kindly donated by a certain Neolithic mother of yours. <laughs> Don't talk about my mother in that fashion. She's a fine figure of a woman. She certainly would be if she could get those knuckles off the ground. <laughs> and shaved more often. If you're trying to provoke me, Mervyn... Don't point that chop at me, Deirdre. Do not forget who's holding the chutney bottle. By the way, where is our... Oh, good morning. Get your hair cut, Wayne. Good morning, Dad. Any snags, Mum? Sorry, dear. Have a chop? Negative, Mum. Listen, Puff, you'll have a chop and enjoy it. You can stick your lousy... Not in front of your mother, boy. Big and all as you are, I can still give you a go with my chutney bottle. <laughs> Now, now, boys, don't argue. I'll eat the chop. Have some chutney, Deirdre. 
That reminds me, Wayne. Uh, turn on the radio. It's time for the replay of my commentary of the uh, big race last night. Uh, Must we, uh, Dad? Uh, it's uh, bad enough uh, listening to you alive over the uh, breakfast uh, without listening to uh, that uh, radio uh, voice of uh, yours. Shut up, Wayne. Uh, here it is now. Now we replay Mervyn Grimley's call of last night's big race. Over to you, Mervyn. They're off to an excellent start. <laughs> and number two, that is two, is going much faster than all the others. <laughs> and will almost certainly win the race. And he has. <laughs> And now, back to the studio. How uh, do you get uh, that uh, funny tone uh, to your uh, voice, uh, Dad? Practice makes perfect, Wayne. Uh, more chutney, dear? Just lie down on the couch. Comfy? Mm -hmm. uh, mind your shoes on the vinyl there. Sorry. Uh, now, shall we try a quick word association exercise? Uh, all right. Ready? Glass. Beer. Beer. Bob Hawk. Bob Hawk. <laughs> Bob Hawk. Hmm. Mother-in-law. Bob Hawk. Um, Bob Hawk. Wait for it. Bob Hawk. Hammer. Bob Hawk. Cup of coffee. Bob Hawk. Cigarette. Bob Hawk. Relax. Bob Hawk. Well, it's finished now. Bob Hawk. I think you're progressing very well. Bob Hawk. At least the Whitlam fixation is gone. Bob Hawk. <laughs> uh, you can go now. Bob Hawk. Same time tomorrow, Mr. Fraser. <laughs> Bob Hawk. Bob Hawk. Bob Hawk. And now over to our roving reporter. Hello, this is Derek Roving. This morning, I spoke to Mr. Arthur Wyndham, who's been racing pigeons for 23 years without success. It's only a matter of time before I beat one of the bludgers. <laughs> he said at training this morning. But right now, I'm at the police academy, where I'm about to interview Ms. Dorothy Finchley. And hello, Dorothy. Hello, Derek. Call me Derek. Can do, Mr. Roving. Dorothy. Call me Dorothy. All right. Dorothy. Yes? I understand you're in charge of the curriculum here at the police academy. Right again, Derek. However, this morning it broke. So I'm busy mapping out the syllabus of what these students will learn. Which is? Well, the aspiring young policeman begins his course of study with a comprehensive 20-minute lecture in common law, <laughs> followed by a four-day beginner's course in poofta bashing. <laughs> So, during your visit, Derek, it could be wise to be a bit careful who you smile at. The boys are just a bit edgy. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. Call me Dorothy. Thank you. Then I presume the course explores modern criminology and crime-fighting techniques? Quite right, Derek. Here is our manual. Let me read aloud from it so as you can understand what I am saying. Thank you, Dorothy. Call me Dorothy. <laughs> I might as well read aloud as my lips will be moving anyway. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Then I shall proceed. Day one, police cars, their care and maintenance, and breathalysers for fun and profit. <laughs> Day two, SP bookies, their care and maintenance, followed by a lecture entitled Organised Crime and Today's Police Force, a profile of a demarcation dispute. <laughs> oh, that's fascinating, Dorothy. Call me Dot. No, call me Derry. Day three, Derry, deals with administration and business principles in the police force, with a series of lectures variously entitled Marijuana, It's Impounding and Marketing, Prostitution for Fun and Profit, and Gambling Dens, Their Care and Maintenance. That's amazing, Dot. Call me Darling. Call me Snookums. Day four, Snookums. Covers a myriad of miscellaneous facets the young policeman will face in his career. E.g., i.e., viz to boot, Lamborghini or Jensen, a purchasing decision for the young constable. Bertram Wainer, know your enemy. 
advanced poofter bashing or how to incite a Nancy boy to knock himself senseless on your boot and then hurl himself down four flights of stairs. <laughs> And finally, you too can reach Nirvana, or how to transfer to the Queensland Police Force. <laughs> well, that was fascinating, darling. Come here, Snookums. Kiss me and I'll tell you something. What? You're under arrest. But, darling... Call me Bert. Bert? Sergeant Bert Finchley of the Undercover Squad. Righto, students, out of the bushes and gather round for part two of Advanced Poofter Bashing. LAUGHTER